Hello, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers, uh, Hojo, for the invitation. It's really uh, my pleasure to speak at this online event. So uh, I'm going to give uh, a series of two talks, uh, basically about uh, a survey about minimal services in the unit sphere in three dimensions. And for the second talk, I'm going to talk about uh, free boundary minimal services in the unit ball, also in three dimensions. All right. As uh, I was told that there are some uh, graduate students uh, in the audience. Uh, so uh, I would try to keep the, uh, the technicalities to a minimum. So basically, I'm not going to include any proof at all uh, about the results. Um, so the idea is just to give an over, over, overview of the subject and some of the recent developments, as well as uh, several open questions in the field. All right. So here's a brief outline for the first talk. Okay, so I'm gonna start from the very basic uh, definitions and properties about minimal services in the sphere. So the sphere, I'm gonna think about this as uh, just um, the unit sphere in the four dimensional Euclidean space equipped with the induced round metric. So it will be denoted by S3. All right, so if we consider a surface sigma inside the sphere, we say that this is a minimal surface in S3 if and only if one of the following three conditions hold. Okay, so these are equivalent conditions to be a minimal surface in the sphere. So the first condition is a geometric condition that the mean curvature of sigma has to vanish identically. Right. So the second condition is that the surface sigma is actually a critical point to the area functional if we use the area uh, induced from the metric on S3. And the third condition is a more PDE uh, uh, criteria, which says that if you look at the coordinate functions xi, which are coordinate functions on R4, you restrict it to the minimal surface, then this function on the minimal surface satisfy the equation that if you look at negative Laplacian on sigma i, that would just be two times sigma i. So this Laplacian here is just the intrinsic Laplacian on sigma. These three conditions are easily seem to be uh, equivalent to each other. So the first two are equivalent because of the first variation formula for area. So if we compute, uh, if we deform the surface and in a one parameter family and compute the rate of change of the area, you will see that uh, the mean curvature will come up as the sort of the gradient of the area, the negative gradient of the area. So, uh, so this would be uh, a critical point. That means this uh, first variation vanishes for all x, then the mean curvature has to vanish. So this shows the first, uh, the equivalence of the first and second statement above. So for the uh, for the third statement, we can look at it from the point of view that if we think about the surface inside S three which is also sitting inside the bigger ambient space R4. So we can measure the mean curvature vector as a co-dimension two submanifold in R4. All right, so if we take the position vector and compute the Laplace, the intrinsic Laplacian of the position vector. All right, so this gives you a vector in R4. This vector is precisely the, uh, the mean curvature vector. All right, so uh, if, sigma is indeed a minimal surface inside S3, then this mean curvature vector, remember this is in R4, should project to the zero vector on the sphere. So that means uh, H will be parallel to the position vector. So you can figure out that uh, the, uh, the, the constant of, uh, that it is parallel to is actually equal to two. Okay. So this uh, simple calculation shows that the third condition is also equivalent to the other two. All right. So, uh, so this uh, three definitions provides different point of view of thinking about minimal services in S3. Okay, so what are some simplest examples? Okay. On, on, on the sphere, the simplest one, of course, is just the totally geodesic so-called equatorial two sphere. So you can uh, just take the, uh, the slice of setting uh, one of the coordinate function, x4, say, equal to zero. Then you're gonna get this uh, great sphere on the, on the three-dimensional sphere, which is totally geodesic, 
second fundamental form is actually constant equal to zero, and it has constant Gauss curvature equal to one intrinsically. Okay, so this is just a around a uh, two sphere inside R three. You can think about it like this. So that's the simplest example. The second simplest one is uh, so called the Clifford Torres. Okay, so this is defined by the following equation. So basically, you're thinking about uh, R four as decomposed into C cross C. Okay, so in each inside each complex plane, you have a unit circle. So you take the cross product of these two uh, two unit circles to get the torus. This is a Clifford torus. So uh, so obviously this is a flat torus because you just take the cross product uh, in two different copies of R two, which are independent of each other. And using the Gauss equation, you can also easily see that the uh, Clifford torus has constant uh, second uh, fundamental form non square equal to two. So this Clifford torus appears in many other uh, uh, fields in mathematics as well. Uh, for example, because it, it also uh, preserves the half vibration as one action from S3. Okay. So this is a computer generated picture of the Clifford torus. Okay. So you can see there are actually uh, two, two uh, symmetries involved. All right. So, um, so there are some basic properties about closed minimal surfaces in the sphere, which holds uh, for any uh, examples. Okay. So first of all, uh, why this is interesting uh, to look at minimal surfaces in the sphere is that uh, if you take the cone over the minimal surface inside the sphere, so this is the sigma, which lies on the sphere. If you take the cone over it, you're going to get a one dimension higher uh, hypersurface inside our form. So it is uh, easy to check that in fact, uh, sigma is minimal in the sphere, if and only if the cone is minimal in our form. So in other words, uh, these minimal cones would actually provide singularity models for minimal surfaces in our form. Okay, so this is why uh, the study of these minimal surfaces are important. And the easy consequence of the, uh, the third condition uh, in the definition of uh, minimal surface is that uh, if you look at the center of mass, of the minimal surface, it wouldn't look like the picture above, but it will look more like a balanced uh, uh, surface. So if you look at the center of mass of the whole surface inside R4, inside S3, as an object in R4, then you always get the, the center of mass is located at the origin. So, uh, so mathematically, this is saying that the average of the coordinate function should be always zero. So another topological fact one can see is that because uh, S3 is simply connected, so any embedded hypersurface inside will automatically be orientable. So this would be a, a simple observation that will be also relevant to some of our later discussion. Okay. So whenever we con are only concerned about embedded surfaces, then we are basically just looking at orientable surfaces. All right. So in the next uh, part, I want to talk about uh, some known examples and how do we construct these examples. So the very basic question is, uh, so we have talked about two examples, namely the equatorial two sphere and the Clifford torus. So we, wonder, we might wonder, okay, can we have other examples in S3? Okay. But this is a very uh, natural question. And because S3 is so uh, topologically simple, this is the, you know, the simplest uh, three manifold, close three manifold we can think of. So um, we might thought that uh, there might be not so much, uh, not so many minimal surfaces inside. Okay because the topology is so simple. But uh, there's a celebrated um, work of Lawson in 1970, which uh, shows that in fact, all the orientable surfaces can be realized as a minimal surface embedded in S3. Okay. So notice that uh, it's because these are all embedded, so, uh, so the surface must be orientable by our earlier observation. Okay. So the point is that uh, no matter what the genus of this uh, orientable surfaces, I can always realize it as some minimal surface in S3. Okay. So notice that this uh, theorem is very uh, interesting. Uh, well, uh, in fact, there's also an analogous statement for immersed uh, surfaces which are not orientable. So if we allow self intersections, okay, so uh, these non orientable surfaces can be uh, minimally immersed in S3 as well, all of them except for one choice, which is the LP2. Okay. So other than the real projective two space, 
all the non-orientable services like the client bottle, etc., they can all be uh, minimally immersed in S3. Okay. So this is also very surprising. Okay, so, uh, so we can basically get all topological types when we look at minimal services in S3. So if we allow immersion, okay, other than embeddedness, in fact, uh, there are a lot of examples one can construct using ODEs, et cetera. So uh, these are constructed by Lawson in 1969 and also Xiang and Lawson in 19, 1991, uh, 1971. So uh, they actually found there are infinitely many immersed minimal toroid inside this three sphere. And actually this uh, minimal toroid can be studied from the point of view of integrable system. So there are some uh, work done by uh, Hitchin and Bobanko, for example, which um, classify this immersed minimal toroid in S3. Okay, so um, so how do we actually construct these examples uh, that uh, that Lawson uh, proved in 1970? So the main idea is to use a tessellation if of S3. So uh, so well S3, uh, if you use a stereographic projection, so so you will get the following picture, which is just like the R3 with point at infinity. So, um, so the point is that I want to divide S3 into smaller regions that are uh, um, divided into some uh, cells obeying some symmetries. Okay? So the, uh, they can be uh, generated uh, by just one fundamental domain. So if we look at one fundamental domain there and look at a specific quadrilateral on the boundary of the domain. So these are, notice that these are actually geodesic on S3 because this is a uh, stereographic projection of S3, okay. So, uh, and then we try to solve a plateau problem with this uh, continuous boundary, okay. So we get some um, minimal disk there. And after we have found that minimal disk, I can do reflections about the boundary. But remember that the boundary is geodesic, so we can actually reflect them to get a complete closed uh, minimal surface in S3, which is which is uh, uh, having non-trivial topology, you can compute that. Okay. So uh, in fact, you can actually generate all the possible genus. Some of them may actually, uh, depending on the choice of your tessellation, some of them may have the same genus, okay? but you get infinite many of them of any topological type. So using a rather similar kind of uh, consideration, Clark here, Pinko, and Sterling in 1988, use the, uh, the symmetry of the platonic solids in L3. Okay, so they are, for example, given by the cubes, the tetrahedral, or the dodecahedral, et cetera, or tetrahedral, so there are a lot, a lot of those. Um, and using those uh, platonic symmetries, uh, they can also construct uh, new examples. But now because there are only finitely many uh, platonic symmetries, we only get uh, finitely many new examples from that. Okay. But the, the construction is very similar, so they consider uh, a fundamental region and then look at uh, the uh, plateau minimal disk and then reflect. So there's actually an uh, another line of uh, approach towards constructing samples of minimal surfaces in the sphere. So these are so-called uh, gluing methods. So the first kind of gluing method is called desingularization. Okay. So this is an observation uh, done around 1980s uh, uh, by, for example, by Hoffman and Mises in their papers. So they realized that uh, some of the minimal surfaces, uh, when the genus of the surface uh, is going to infinity, so they can zoom in and they can sort of realize that the, uh, this, the, uh, the, the surfaces look more and more like the classical shirk surface, which is this surface in the middle. Okay. So um, we can sort of imagine that maybe we can kind of reverse the process. Okay, so uh, so how do we do that? This was uh, realized by, uh, by uh, a uh, breakthrough paper of Capulayas in 1997, where he constructed a lot of new, complete embedded minimal services of finite total coverage in R3. Okay. So in that case, uh, for example, a typical case is that if we just look at a complete catenoid together with a plane, okay. so you put them together, so of course they would intersect along a circle. So this is uh, the circle of intersection. So the basic idea about uh, desingularization is to replace this curve of intersection by something which is smooth, but has a lot of genus around it. So, uh, so 
given by the motivation of Hoffman and Mix, we can actually use the, uh, the shark surface as a model and try to fit it into the circle by wrapping it around. Okay. So of course, when you wrap around and then, and then glue it to the original picture, then you will get some error. So the point is that uh, we may be able to use PD arguments to, uh, to correct the errors exactly. So this was actually done uh, precisely by capital layers. All right. And in a much more recent paper, um, Trey and Soret in 2016 also constructed a desingularization of uh, intersecting Clifford Torvai in S3. Okay, so this is uh, not in the uh, exact uh, formulation of capital as where, uh, where this is, uh, 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 where we use a PD approach. Uh, the, the paper of Choi and Soret actually use a more uh, uh, like a plateau construction more like in loss and surfaces. Okay. So, um, so another type of gluing method, which has been very successful uh, is called doubling. Okay. So what does it do? Okay, so, uh, so the very basic idea is that uh, if you have a minimal surface satisfying some uh, non-degeneracy condition, then, uh, then what you can do is that you can take two copies of parallel uh, minimal surfaces. Okay, so we have a minimal surface and then we take two nearby parallel copies near it. Okay, so the point is that uh, maybe I can join them by some catenado bridges, which are very small. Okay, and then I try to correct it to an actual minimal surface. So if you look at the picture on the left, this is uh, uh, the, uh, the doubling or the, uh, the, the stacking of Clifford Torre in, our, in, in the S3. Okay? So the first construction was done by Kepler and Yang, just uh, two copies of Clifford Torre and then joined together by a symmetric array of uh, uh, catenoidal necks, which gets denser and denser on the surface. But later, uh, David Woodgill uh, generalized this construction to like consider more than two copies of the Clifford Torre, and he can also put the necks uh, not in a symmetric way, so there are um, some freedom to choose the position of the, the necks. Okay. Well, later, uh, there's um, actually a harder uh, doubling construction, which uh, concerns doubling of the equatorial two sphere. So this was done by uh, Kepler Layers in 2017, and also uh, a later paper by Kepler Layers and McGrath. Okay, so, uh, so this is uh, kind of shown by the picture on the right here. So you can see from this beautiful picture of uh, uh, Peter McGrath, which shows that there are two copies of spheres you can see. So there, there's one outside and there's also one inside. And you see that in between these two spheres, there are some very small catenoidal necks joining them. Okay. So this is uh, roughly the picture for the doubling of a uh, of the uh, of the sphere, this is much harder because now uh, the next might not be dense on the run sphere, so you have to be careful about how you balance the forces on the next. Okay, now for the last part, I want to uh, or the, for the third part, I want to talk about some uniqueness and classification results. So 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 far we have seen that there are some examples of uh, uh, minimal services in S three. In fact, these are almost the only examples we have. Okay, so. Uh, it's actually quite a difficult question to uh, come up with uh, new examples. All right, but we can sort of go in the other direction. Okay, so uh, what about if we can uh, sort of uh, characterize some of the simpler examples? Okay, so um, so the uh, well, instead of looking at like uh, specific examples, we can consider the, the following modular problem. Okay, let's say if we just think about what are the, all the possible examples of embedded minimal surfaces in S3, which are, for example, topologically sphere, right? Or topologically torus. So we fix the topological type of the surface and look at all the possible examples. So this is the moduli space with a fixed uh, genus, okay? okay? So we fix a certain number, which is the genus of the surface we are looking at. And this script MG, denotes all the possible examples which are closed, embedded, minimal surfaces in the sphere. And all these surfaces has genus G, right? All right. So first of all, uh, we should think about just uh, an obvious ambiguity coming from the ambient isometries of S3. Okay, so if we have a minimal surface in the sphere, if you rotate it, of course you get another minimal surface in the sphere, right? They're actually the same, okay? Uh, just differ by a rotation or reflection of the sphere. 
Um, so there's a fork load, fork load conjecture which has been around for a long time, which uh, uh, if we look at the space of all minimal surfaces of a fixed genus, okay, modulo the, uh, the ambiguity caused by the ambient isometries, then in fact, this is a finite set. Okay? So in other words, we expect that there are only finitely many close and better minimal surface in the sphere of a certain fixed topological type. Okay. All right. So this uh, conjecture is still open, unfortunately. Okay. So so far, uh, the sort of the best results one can prove in for all possible topological types is the following smooth compactness results due to Choi and Shing in 1981. So they proved that if you look at the modular space, modular space with a fixed genus, okay, then this space is in fact a compact space. Right, compact with respect to what topology? So this is uh, in the strongest topology, the smooth topology. Okay. That means uh, this, a sequence of minimal surfaces of the same genus in the sphere is always going to converge in a graphical sense in the C infinity to a limit embedded minimal surface of the same genus. Okay. So in particular, uh, these minimal surfaces of genus G cannot de degenerate in the limit to a, a surface with a smaller genus. Okay. So notice that this is sort of compatible with the well, sort of the, the follow conjecture and the compactness of the, the ambient space uh, asymmetry group. Okay. So um all right, so we are still uh, quite far from un, uh, from proving the uh, the general conjecture about the finiteness of the modernized space. Uh, but we can still ask uh, other questions sort of related to can we can we get classification results if we look at the topology or the Morse index, or the area of the minimal surface. All right, so the first uh, characterization by topology, the result uh, was obtained by Amgren early in the 1966. So he proved that uh, if we only consider topological sphere, okay, even if, if we allow immersed examples, in fact, you get nothing but the equatorial two sphere. Okay. So the only minimal sphere whether immersed or embedded in this in S3 has to be the great equatorial two sphere. Right. So that means so okay, so uh, for sphere there are no other interesting examples. What about for higher genus uh, services? So uh in a, in a paper of Lawson in 1970, he showed that if we consider uh, any higher genus surface, okay, all right, so we don't know whether this is unique or not, but at least you know that this is so-called topologically unique. Okay, this is, has to be unknotted. That means if you have two examples of closed and better minimal surface in the sphere of the same genus, then you should be able to deform by ambient isotopy from one to another. Okay, it may not be an isometry. It should not, if you have more than two examples, then it may not be an isometry, but it is uh, by continuous uh, ambient diffeomorphism. Okay. So, um, so in the same paper, Lawson made the following. Uh, Long, um, famous conjecture, which um, says that if you look at torus, minimal torus, which are embedded, then you only get the clifford torus. Okay. Of course, up to uh, up to ambient asymmetries of S three. Okay, so notice that embeddedness here is, is very important because uh, as we have seen, if we allow immersed uh, surfaces, we have a lot of examples which are not clifford torus. So there are infinitely many uh, immersed minimal torus in the sphere. Well, this conjecture was uh, open for a long time, but uh, finally it was proved by uh, Brando in 2013 using a novel two-point maximum principle argument, which is uh, sort of in inspired from uh, uh, the development in mean culture flow, non-collapsing uh, behavior in mean culture flow. So a natural question, of course, arises. Okay, now we are sort of uh, settled with the sphere. We only know that we know we know that there are only equatorial two sphere. For embedded torus, we only have the clipper torus. So we can ask, okay, what about for an embedded uh, minimal surface of genus two? Okay. So, um, so this is actually a very hard question. Okay. Even uh, the torus is quite hard to handle. Uh, but there's uh, a sort of related result uh, recently by Capoleas and Wigil uh, this year, which showed that the Lawson surfaces uh, that, that he constructed in 1970 are actually uniquely determined by their symmetries. That means uh, if I know that there's a surface, a minimal surface in the sphere, which has exactly the same symmetries as the Lawson surfaces, then it has to be a Lawson surface. Okay. 
right? So, uh, so there are some kind of characterization uh, using the symmetry. So another direction is to get to look at the MOS index of the minimal surface. Okay. So first of all, we call that minimal surfaces. Uh, there are three equivalent criteria. One of them is that they are critical points to the area functional. So this put uh, minimal surfaces uh, into a variational perspective. So um, if we have a critical point, so that means the first uh, derivative is equal to zero. So we can also look at the second derivative, namely the Hessian, right? So, uh, so in this case, we look at uh, the second variation formula for the area functional. So we will get a symmetric bilinear form Q, right? Which can be expressed as follows. Okay. So this uh, is the standard uh, second version formula. This tool here reflects the, uh, the Richard curvature of the ambient uh, S3. Okay. So um, if we count the number of negative eigenvalues for this uh, symmetric bilinear form, so we get the MOS index of uh, the minimal surface. So this uh, geometrically, this is the, uh, the number of negative directions that you can decrease the area of the minimal surface. Okay. Just like in the uh, in multivariable calculus, uh, if you look at the Hessian, the number of negative uh, eigenvalues gives you the directions, the number of directions, independent directions that you can decrease the function. So um, it's easy, an easy exercise to compute that uh, for the equatorial two sphere, they have index one. And in fact, it's also very easy to see that uh, they are the only one with index one. Okay. Now, one can ask then, what is the next uh, minimal surface with the smallest index? Okay. So in, uh, in this direction, Urbano uh, in 1990 obtained the following uh, characterization. So if you look at the immersed, okay, so it doesn't have to be embedded and immersed minimal surface is fine. Minimal surface in the sphere with positive genus. Okay. So this is not indeed indeed not a very big restriction if you think about the result of Armgren because uh, if it's uh, genus zero, this topological sphere, it has to be equatorial two sphere. Okay. So this uh, is just uh, ruling out equatorial two sphere. So uh, so this result of Rabano says that uh, all the other non-spherical minimal surfaces would have more index at least equal to five. Okay, at least as big as five. All right. And actually, there's one which achieved five, and that's the only one which is given by the Clifford Torres. Okay. So this is a sharp uh, lower bound on the mass index achieved by the Clifford Torres. So of course, uh, a natural question that would come up is that okay. We know that uh, Clifford Torres is the next one, okay, in terms of the smallest index other than the sphere. Then what about the next one after the Clifford Torres? Okay, so this is uh, still open. Okay, we don't know uh, which one may be the, uh, uh, so there's a there's sort of a, a natural guess that may be uh, the Northern Genus 2 surface, okay, denoted by sigma 2, 1, okay, in his paper is the, uh, Maybe the one with the with the, uh, the least index other than the Clifford Torres and the equatorial two sphere. So in fact, uh, in a recent paper of Kepler and Bouguer, they showed that uh, they actually have computed the mod, the index of the all these loss and services uh, C uh, G one right. So this is given by two G plus three. So in particular for the genus two one, this is uh, equal to seven. Okay. So so the sort of the guess is that whether the uh, the next smallest index is given by seven, right? And of course, the related question is that if uh, we can possibly at all to classify all, all the minimal surfaces uh, which have index less than equal to seven. So this is still uh, pretty much open in this direction. Okay, so, um, so the next characterization I want to talk about is in terms of the area, okay? So, uh, so using, um, Min max theory, uh, so we can talk about, uh, we can define a, a sequence of numbers called the volume spectrum of uh, the unit sphere. So this is very much like uh, the Laplacian uh, spectrum, okay? So you get a sequence of uh, uh, eigenvalues in some sense going to infinity. Right? So this uh, eigenvalues called P width are actually achieved up to multiplicity by area of closed minimal surfaces in the sphere, all right? So, um, so Armgren in the 1960s showed that uh, the least area minimal surface in the sphere is attained uniquely by the equatorial two sphere. Okay. So um, of course, and the next question one should ask is that what is the next one in terms of the area? Okay. The sphere has the least area, what is the next one? 
So this is actually a very difficult question, uh, which was answered very recently by Marcus and Levis in uh, 2014. So they showed that uh, other than the sphere, all the other minimal surface, even immersed, would have area at least as big as two pi square. And two pi square is precisely the area of the clifford torus. So this is the, you get a sharp lower bound, which is uh, uh, attained by the clifford torus. So notice that uh, we can allow immersed. In fact, uh, this, this theorem is mostly concerned about uh, embedded minimal surfaces, okay? If you have immersed surface, uh, in fact, one can show that this would be at least, uh, at least eight pi, okay? So uh, eight pi is, uh, Bigger than two pi square, so uh, so we don't. We, it, this is not going to achieve the next least of area example. Okay. So in fact, they have proved a lot more. Okay, so they're not just proving this, but this. Uh, they proved that uh, the volume spectrum, the four, the first four numbers in the spectrum is equal to four pi. And the fifth one is equal to two pi square, which is attained by the Clifford torus. So um, so this. This fact they prove is actually a key ingredient in their uh, proof of the real more conjecture. Okay. So in terms of the characterization, okay, of course, uh, one can further ask, okay, uh, after the sphere and the torus and the clipper torus, what is the next one in terms of uh, these possible area? Is it the, uh, the genus two Lawson surface that we talked about before, or is it something else? Okay. So this is again, pretty much open, but a very interesting uh, uh, question. So finally, I want to uh, uh, talk about a related uh, eigenvalue problem on closed surfaces, which is closely related to minimal surfaces in the sphere. So, uh, so as we all know, okay, if we consider a smooth closed surface sigma, if once I put a Riemannian metric on it, I can define the Laplacian operator. Okay, so this Laplacian operator has a discrete set of eigenvalues called the Laplace spectrum. So the lowest one is achieved by a constant function, which is a uh, Correspond to eigenvalue zero. So the first non trivial one is lambda one, and this uh, goes to positive infinity at a certain rate, uh, uh, depicted by the Wiles law. So, um, an old theorem of Hurst says that, okay, so this is the question, right? So, uh, if I look at all the possible metric we can define on the sphere, okay, the metric is smooth, then actually if I can get an upper bound on the first eigenvalue lambda one. So this is multiplied by the area of the surface uh, just to make it scale invariant. So essentially, if you fix the area to be one, then uh, there's a sharp upper bound for the first eigenvalue. Okay. And this is sharp, and this is only achieved by the round metric on the sphere. Okay. So, um, okay, so this is a very nice result uh, about uh, metrics on the sphere. And later on, uh, Yang and Yao uh, in 1980s, look at this a similar problem for uh, higher genus services as well. So they can actually also prove a similar upper bound, okay, where the upper bound C above is, uh, is only depending on the topology, in this case, the genus of the, uh, the surface or whether it's orientable or not. So, uh, so this uh, course upper bound uh, prompts us to, to ask the following natural question. Okay. So can I actually achieve the supremum of this quantity. Okay. So if once I fix the topological surface, can I find sort of the best metric, which is extremizing the, uh, this quantity, lambda one times the area. Okay. If I can find such an extremal metric, what does it look like okay, in terms of the geometry? So essentially Hurst answered this question for the, uh, for the sphere and the round sphere is sort of the, uh, the, uh, the metric, which is the best among all possible smooth metrics on the sphere. So, um, this is actually a, a rather difficult question. And Matthew Rashvili in 1999 uh, gave a very useful characterization, which linked it to minimal surfaces in sphere. So what it proved is that uh, if we know that the extremal metric is spoof, okay, so this is not always uh, true. So sometimes uh, uh, you might get an extremal metric, but may have some singularities, okay. But if this is smooth, then in fact, the, the surface with this, with this smooth metric up to a conformal diffeomorphism can actually be realized as a minimal surface in the sphere. Okay. But the catch is that the sphere may be rather high dimensional. So this n is at least bigger than or at least equal to three. Okay. So you might be getting a minimal surface, but in higher dimension. Okay. So, um, so, so this problem of whether we can find an extremal metric for a given topological surface 
has been pursued by uh, many uh, mathematicians. So as we have said, Hirsch studied the case for the sphere, and this is achieved by the Ryan sphere. So on the side of minimal surfaces in the uh, in this unit spheres, this corresponds to the equatorial two sphere in S3. Okay. So in this case, n is equal to three. Well, Li and Yao studied this problem for on RP2 and found that also the run metric on RP2 achieved the, uh, the, the maximum of the quantity. And this is actually related uh, by Nadi Rashvili's uh, theorem above to the Veronese minimal surface inside S4, which is embedded, but this is in high dimension, dimension two. Okay. So for Taurus, uh, Nadi Rashvili showed that uh, the flat metric on the equatorial, equilateral torus, okay, so is actually achieving the, uh, the maximum. Okay. This can be related to a minimal surface, which is inside S5. And later on, El Suvi and Elias uh, found that uh, if we look at a critical metric, so they are not necessarily maximizing, but they are critical points to the, to the function that we're looking at, then this uh, can actually be achieved by the square torus, which correspond by the Rashvili's theorem to the Clifford torus in S3. Okay. And if we look at the Klein bottle, that Rashvili and several other uh, uh, authors uh, found that there's a non-flat metric that realizes uh, the maximum, and this uh, gives an immersion into S4. All right. So, um, so this is a very difficult question, and not much is known uh, about, for example, hygienic surfaces other than those uh, listed above. So finally, I would like to uh, uh, say something about the uh, conjecture of Yao about the uh, uh, first eigenvalue for minimal surfaces in S3. So remember that uh, a minimal surface in S3 is uh, having the coordinate function satisfying this PDE. Okay, so minus the plus and xi is equal to two xi. So that means, in other words, uh, two is an eigenvalue for the Laplace for the intrinsic Laplacian of six. So, uh, so one can then ask whether this eigenvalue two is indeed the first eigenvalue or not. Okay. So, uh, so this is a famous problem of Yao uh, raised in 1982. So he conjectured that if you look at close and better minimal surface in the sphere, then they always have first uh, Laplace eigenvalue equal to two. Okay. So this question to date is still open in, uh, in the general case. Uh, there are some puzzle results uh, early on in uh, Choi and Wang. They proved that uh, Number one is at least one. Okay, so this is half, uh, about half from the optimal uh, uh, two conjectured by Yao. And uh, about 10 years ago, Che and Sorey uh, verified that uh, actually all the Lawson surfaces and the Kakir Picot Stirling surfaces constructed using the tessellation of S3 all satisfy Yao's conjecture. And uh, Tang and Yan in 2000 and 13 proved the Yao's conjecture in the case of isoparametric minimal surfaces. Okay. So uh, a natural question is that what okay, uh, uh, we don't even know at this moment whether uh, the surfaces constructed by other methods like desingularization or doubling uh, satisfy the Yao's conjecture. Okay, because they had a sort of had a different symmetry groups uh, from the Lawson and Kakir Pinko Sterling surfaces that uh, complicates the nodal domain argument. Right. So we want to ask, okay, at least can we verify the else conjecture for all the existing examples? So this is an interesting question along uh, this direction. Okay, so this uh, is the first part of my talk. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>